All right, exercise 20. Um, so yeah, this one's kind of neat. So, F it, M is a finite dimensional subspace, so let X1 through Xn be a basis for M. And then let, by the way, I think there's an easier proof of this, but I realized that after I'd finished writing this out, so we're just going to go with this one. So there is some map phi from Kn to M be the isomorphism determined by or create or just you take you send ej to xj and you linear lot you be the isomorphism given determined by these maps you send the basis element ej to xj and if you 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 linearize it to make it linear so then phi is linear by construction and by exercise six you may want to go back and check the map that sends a to phi of a is a norm on kn which is equivalent to the norm uh, the one norm which is given by sum from 1 to n of aj ej equals the sum from 1 to n of the ajs so this is a linear isomorphism and so it's invertible and its inverse is also nice. So then phi and phi inverse are bounded. Right? Because they're it's basically an isomorphism. It's like it's like the same thing. Um isomorphisms are just an isomorphism between two spaces means you just take the first space and you rename all the elements. And so they're going to have the same properties. So they're both bounded. So now let pi j from k n to k be the projection which sends, um, let's see here, this is in k n, so we're going to send a1 a n to a j. So then f j, which is just v j pi j composed with v inverse, is a composition. Eh, composition of bounded linear maps and hence is bounded, and this holds for all j. Furthermore, fj maps from m to k, and for all x and m, the norm of fj of x is equal to this definition norm of fj composed with v inverse of x, is less than or equal to the norm of pi j times norm of phi inverse times phi inverse times the norm of x. And the norm of phi j is just one, and so this is just norm of pi inverse j times x. And we know that this is just some finite constant because phi inverse is a bounded linear function. So, by Han, eh, by Han Bonnach, each fj 
has an extension fj, which maps from x to k. Um, and this is going to be a map of norm less than or equal to phi inverse. Let's just say such that norm of j is less than or equal to norm of phi inverse. Okay. Let n be the intersection of the kernels. This is an inter... So n is going to be the thing that we're looking for. So this is an intersection of closed subspaces and thus is a closed subspace. Also, what else do we have? I'm going to leave that there so that we have this fn, fj here for reference. So what is m intersect then? This is just the intersection from 1 to n of the kernel of fj intersected with m. But then that's the intersection from 1 to n, since these are all extensions of the fj's. When you restrict it to m, you just get the fj's. And then that's the intersection of, by definition, kernel of pi of phi inverse. Uh, but this is just phi of intersection from 1 to n of the kernel of pi j. And that's something you can just see by inspection. Uh, sure, let's draw this out. You've got m, you've got kn, and you've got k. And so you've got this um, phi inverse going this way, and you've got this phi going this way. Yeah, eraser, there we go. That looks even worse, but I'm not going to deal with that eraser again. So this is just a projection. So then this map is fj, little fj. And so what do we have here? So basically, if you look at the kernels of phi of, or pi of phi inverse, there should be a j here. If you look at these kernels, then this is the intersection of these kernels is just going to be um, you take these kernels here and you push them back here. And so it works. Oh, but we're not done yet. This is just phi of. What does this intersection look like? This intersection looks like, uh, here, let's actually draw it out. 1 to n of 0 k times, um, then we're going to get a 0. k. What is this? This is the jth coordinate. So this is the sum over all coordinates of this of the zero coordinate, and, and so what, what lives, what survives this intersection? Only the things where you have the zero at every single one, and so that's just, yeah, it's just phi of the element zero. And what's that? That's zero. So, well, this is the zero set. And so intersection of m with n is zero. Also, If x, and x, um, then certainly um, this thing here that I've just kind of magically pulled out of thin air, this is a sum, this is a linear combination of things in, this is a j, not a semicolon. This is a linear combination of, well, this is an m since it is a 
linear combination of elements in M. Is that true? Right, we've got X and X, and so each FJ of X, F sends things to K, so this is a scalar, and each X, XJ, hmm, I'm not seeing why this belongs to M. Oh, yeah, of course, each XJ is X, the XJs are a basis for M, and so this is this is just the linear combination of the coordinate vectors, and so it belongs to M. So this is the linear combination of elements M, and furthermore, since FIXJ equals delta IJ, and thus, wow, this is a really weirdly worded sentence, so my apologies, but at least I'm getting this out there. Going for quality, quantity over quality here. Um, so, this is the FIXJs um, equals delta IJ here. And that's because, yeah, the you're projecting a basis element of MJ into K. And so if it was one of the basis elements, if, if it matches up, then it's going to give you one because it's a basis element. If it doesn't match up, then it's not, then, then it's zero in that particular basis element direction. And so it gives you zero. And then when you extend it linearly, it's going to preserve this fact because the XJs are in M. Since this and this, furthermore, since this and this, we have fi of x minus 1 to n of fj x xi. What is this? This is just you break it up by linearity, fi of x. So 1 to n of fj x, then fi xj. What do we just say about these? This is delta ij, so what's going to live? The only thing that's going to live here is the fi is f j x j and we're summing over wait wait a minute f j x right so we're going to sum the f j x's f i x f i x i so the only thing here is going to going to survive is the i term where this is going to give you 1, and then this is going to give you fix. So there we go. So this is equal to this, and this is 0. Um, and so we have this, this, this for all i. And we'll make this a little longer. And thus x minus sum 1 to n, fj x, xi is in n. Thus, x is in m plus n, because you write it as x minus this, which is an n, and then plus this, which is an m. So, hence, x equals m plus n. And now we are done with this proof. One last note is I think that you could have started with, like instead of doing the things with the little fjs where you have to compose isomorphisms with projections, um, I, I actually borrowed a lot of ideas from this proof from, a, uh, from some notes I found online, and, and I, I put a link to those um, in the description of this playlist. And... Uh, I, I'm definitely getting a sense that perhaps the author was a little more algebraic focused because we have this whole isomorphism thing going on, and that's, even though it's kind of an important thing in math in general, uh, it doesn't seem like it's really necessary for this problem, but kind of can help with your understanding, particularly if you have a good understanding of isomorphisms. 
but I think you could have just taken this thing, this fi xj equals delta ij, and extended that linearly, um, and just got to, well, define functions f by this property, and just extended this property linearly to all of m, and then used Hanbanek from there. And perhaps that would have worked, and perhaps that would be a shorter proof, but this is also a proof, and if you go with this proof, then we are done.